This is not entertainment. This is about getting closer to the Lord. I have a message today that I believe is greatly needed throughout not just the body of Christ, but throughout the world today. So if you're watching online, or even if you have your phone here today, as long as it's not a distraction, you go to our Fit Church page, or my Steve Ray page, either one, share this on your timeline. Because the the topic of what we're going to be speaking about is going to help lots of people today. Year 2020, for many people, was a year of great sadness, great despair, great loss. For some, it was great gain, praise the Lord, but some, great loss. Many have experienced great sadness this year. And the title of the message today is Dealing with Sadness. Dealing with Sadness. And if I could, for a moment, I'll share my own kind of story with you. Um, how many of you know that every pastor, every man and woman of God, every spiritual leader goes through times of heartbreak, depression, depression, sadness, anxiety, sometimes even fear. Right? Even though we're men and women of faith, and 95% of the time, we're on it, and we're pressing forward, we're fighting devils, and we're taking authority over them, and we're taking victory in the name of Yeshua, and things are good, you're feeling great, you have this holy confidence. There's still a small percentage of time where we deal with some stuff. Amen. We all deal with that we're human. We deal with some stuff. And so... I had no exception. And, you know, the last few days, I'll be transparent with you, I have felt really sad. And I just don't like that feeling at all. I've just been feeling really sad. You know, I, uh, most of you know I have uh, my daughter, Mariah, that uh, I don't get to see as often as I should uh, because of the way that. It's set up. Legal system is all set up as a mess. And so it's not fair for me, but especially not fair for her. That she doesn't get to see her dad as much as she should. So in the last few weeks I've gotten her like two days. And um, it was just breaking my heart that even I guess it was uh, Christmas Eve um, when her mother picked her up, and so we had uh, Sophia and them were over visiting, and just they, everybody left, and I was all alone. And all of a sudden, I just started getting sad. I'm like, I want my loved ones here with me, and now I don't have anybody. I'm all alone. And, and it's, it's funny because we know that we have the Lord. We know that He's ever present. Amen. You know, we know that He's there and provides the things that we need. But there's something about being a human where you feel that you want the love of other people, Teach. not only the love of God. Amen. You know, I know we like to run around and say, "Love God is enough," you know, you know but we're human. And we, we have the desire to feel love from another person. And when I when I when I felt that way, when I was feeling so broken and, and, and lonely, and all, I'm not asking for a pity party, but to, and just telling my story. And then the next morning, I wake up. You know, as you know, I don't you know celebrate Christmas traditionally like everybody would. You know, but it was a holiday morning, and, and still when I wake up, I don't have. Anybody with me? To talk to. I'm just by myself, feeling sad. Oh, bless you. you know. And but so, ain't you got the pastor? Ain't you got the dog? Yeah, I got my dog. 
But there's a problem. My dog, he doesn't like hugs. Oh, no. So I try to give him a hug. Yeah. What? I need my daughter. She gave me hugs. So, anybody understand? You feel like you want the love of another person. Now, not only do I have the desire, and I don't want to sound selfish or all about me, because it's not, it's a lesson for everybody, because I think we can all bear witness with this. Not only do I feel lonely, but I want to have people in my life that I know not just say that they love me, but show me that they love me. And people that are loyal, that I can count on, that I know will be there for me. I have those desires. You want that. And, and, and you know what? Every once in a while, I feel it. But sometimes I don't. Amen. You know? I said, well, sometimes I feel like I know, sometimes I don't. <laughs> you know? And there's, you know, there's a couple people in my life that, that I really, you know, feel that love and appreciation from. But not many. Hardly any. How about you? You know, do you feel that you get the amount of love from others that you would like to get? Do you feel appreciated as much as you would like to feel appreciated? No. <laughs> See, now the thing is, here's the trick to it. The Bible says that we're supposed to guard our heart above all things. Like, it's really because out of the flow of the issues of life, our heart is really important and we've got to protect it. There was a time in my life where I finally opened my heart to the point where I became vulnerable. And I just thought maybe it was the right thing to do because I was just always protective. You know, I'm like, I ain't gonna get hurt. I'm tough, I'm gonna stay strong, I'm gonna hurt me. I'll still be nice, I'll still show love, but you ain't hurt me. You know, I'm not gonna be stupid. But there was a time that I opened my heart, became vulnerable, and I got tremendously hurt, like crushed. I didn't feel like living. And I go back and I think, Lord, was was that was that stupid? Was that dumb? Or, or was that your will? Or like I haven't figured it out yet. Like, you know, did that just make me feel more human and learn how to take victory in different ways? And you know, I dealt with stuff so I can help other people deal with stuff. Is that a reason for it? You know? And then I wonder, man, can I get back to that point where I'm like Superman, nothing's gonna hurt me. You know? And if I could, would it be good? Kryptonite. All right? So. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> yes. We all have our own kryptonite. <laughs> Amen. Different types. All right. So dealing with sadness. I'm going to go through a bunch of scriptures. Is that okay with you? Amen. You love the word of God? Amen. Uh, much better than my own word. So we're just going to read this word. Okay. <laughs> All right. Are you ready? Dealing with sadness. Father God, I just pray right now that you open the ears and the hearts and minds of your people here and watching online. And Father, you know when I teach and preach, I'm preaching and teaching to myself. And I need to hear it most of all. And I just pray, Lord, that if anyone else needs to hear it, it become a blessing to them. And your word does not return void, but accomplishes what it was purposed to do. Let me give you the glory for the name of your son. Amen. Amen. Second Corinthians chapter 7, verse 10 says, For godly sorrow produces repentance, leading to salvation, not to be regretted, but the sorrow of the world produces death. Okay? I think some of you just let that go right in one ear out the other. Are we good? I'm going to read it again because this is the foundation. I want you to I want you to understand. Amen. Okay, this is talking about how there's a godly sorrow and there's a worldly sorrow. Okay? For godly sorrow produces repentance leading to salvation. So that's a good thing. Like, Lord, I'm sorry, I should have done that, you know. I'm, I'm sad, I'm upset at myself for what I did. That's good. And it says should not be regretted. Amen. But part B of that verse says. The sorrow of the world produces death. See, if you allow yourself to get into deep sadness, sorrow, depression, 
It causes you to make decisions that are not good for you or good for others. Tons of people die every year due to suicide because of depression. Somebody said something to them or did something to them or they, they feel they, they're not loved or appreciated. They feel they have no purpose. Has anybody been there? I've been there. I've had these feelings. They're not true. But we feel those things because of a certain circumstance or season of our life. So first we need to understand that there's a good one and there's a bad one. Okay? Psalm 34, verse 17 and 18. says, The righteous cry, and the Lord hears, and delivers them out of all their troubles. The Lord is not unto them that are of a broken heart, and save such as be of a contrite spirit. So if you have a heavy heart, a broken heart, he says he's near to you. God is like right here saying, hey, I'm here. I'm your comforter. Hello. You can, you can rely on me. You don't have to focus on all those other things and the cares of the world. I'm here for you. I got this. But sometimes, even though we know that, isn't it still hard to Amen. Right? John 14. Verse 1 says, Let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. And so he's saying, like, don't let your heart be troubled. You know what that tells me? I actually have the ability to stop it. Amen. That's hard to receive sometimes because it puts it in my, my own lap, like my own responsibility. I'm like, Lord, no, I want you to take it away. He says, let not your heart be troubled. And following that, Psalm 55, 22 says, Cast thy burden upon the Lord, and he shall sustain thee. He shall never suffer the righteous to be moved. Amen. So, we're supposed to cast our burden. How do you do that? How do you take the burden that you have the sorrow that you have and say, here, I lay it at the cross. I give it to you, Lord. You know how you do it? Just how you just did it. You just do it. You pray. You speak it. You say it. And you just give it to him by faith. Okay? And he'll take it. Jeremiah 29, 11 says, For I know the thoughts that I think toward you, say the Lord, thoughts of peace and not of evil, to give you an expected end. Psalm 18, 2 says, The Lord is my rock and my fortress and my deliverer, my God, my strength, in whom I will trust, my buckler and the horn of my salvation and my high tower. Amen. You know, we can depend on Him. When we're going through something, we shouldn't be running from God. We have to be running to God. Amen. But you know how many people are running from God? And a lot of times it's because they're blaming God. Mm -hmm. Well, you allow this to happen in my life. No, son, you allow that to happen in your life. That was your decision. I didn't make that decision for you. We're playing the blame game on God. He's the one who's just like, I'm here for you. I know you goofed it up. But hey, I love you. I'm here for you. You have to have the right perspective. 1 Peter 5, 6 through 11. Here we go. Everybody pay attention. Don't get distracted on your phone unless you read your Bible. Humble yourselves, therefore, under the mighty hand of God, and he may exalt you in due that he may exalt you in due time, casting all your care upon him, for he cares for you. See, there's that casting again. Throwing it down to the cross. Be sober, be vigilant. Because your adversary, adversary the devil, as a roaring lion, walks about seeking whom he may devour. Whom resist steadfast in the faith, knowing that the same afflictions are accomplished in your brethren that are in the world. So he says, cast your care upon the Lord. The enemy is out to get you. He says, recognize that and resist him. And we know in the 
And another scripture says, resist the enemy, he will flee from you. Verse 10 says, but the God of all grace, who has called us unto his eternal glory by Christ Jesus, after that you have suffered a while, make you perfect, establish, strengthen, and settle you. To him be glory and dominion forever and ever. Amen. Now, there's something in this verse that I that popped out of me, and that's why I wanted to share with you. I don't know if it popped out of any of you. But verse number 10, it says, I'm going to read that again, see if it popped out. But the God of all grace, who has called us unto his eternal glory by Christ Jesus, after that you have suffered a while, makes you perfect, establishes you, strengthens you, settles you. My question was, after I suffered a while, Understand. Amen. Do you understand that the Lord allows us to go through things yes. for a good reason? Yes. See, a lot of people will blame God for things. Well, He's not a good God if He allows this to happen, that to happen, allows me to go through this and that. You don't understand the reasons that God does what He does. He's perfect. He has perfect reason for it. And sometimes people just think they're smarter than Him. And so they blame God and calls Him unrighteous. No. No. It's like when I teach a martial arts class. There's certain things that I do to be hard on my students. I talk to you about it. <laughs> there's certain things I do to be hard on my students. And there's a reason for it because it's going to produce a fruit later. There's good things that are going to come out of it. You don't get stronger unless there's some weight on your chest that you have to resist. All right? You're not going to go pump air like, you know, bench press air and think you're going to get stronger. It doesn't work that way. Your muscles need to get fatigued. You need to go through some stuff if you're going to get stronger. Now, why would God want you to get stronger instead of say the same? Because he wants you to help others. He's appointed you to be a blessing to other people. In order for you to be a blessing to other people, you have to be blessed. In order for you to be blessed, you got to go through some stuff. No, I won't be blessed. <laughs> <laughs> so you don't love other people? You don't want to help others? You know, God wants to use you for His glory. Amen. James chapter 5, verse 13 says, Is any among you afflicted? Let him pray. Amen. Is any married? Let him sing songs. So this puts it in our lap again. Do you see that? Is any of you afflicted? It says, let him pray. Oh, I gotta pray when I'm so so if I'm going through something, you're not just gonna like fix it. I gotta actually cast my cares upon you and I gotta pray. Okay, now I get it. You understand? You gotta do you gotta do these things. You gotta go through the process. Okay? Like one of the things I did today in the shower is I spent time in worship. And that helped lift some burdens, you know, and like just just crowds and worship. Deuteronomy 31, 6 and verse 8. Be strong and of good courage. Fear not, nor be afraid of them. For the Lord thy God, he it is that doth go that go with thee. He will not fail you, nor forsake you. In verse 8, and the Lord. He it is that goes before thee. He will be with thee. He will not fail thee, neither forsake thee. Fear not, neither be dismayed. Like just giving you that confidence that the Lord is always going with you. He's there. You know, you don't have to be afraid of anything. And, and sometimes, oh my goodness, many times, the root problem that you're having that's leading to sadness and despair and depression, a lot of it is actually fear. And it's disguised into being something else. If you dig deep and you go back further and further, why do I feel this? Okay, well then why do I feel that? Why do I think this? Okay, why do I think Oh, I'm walking in fear. I'm f afraid of this. I'm afraid of that. I'm afraid this person's not going to like me. I'm afraid I'm going to lose this. I'm afraid I'm not going to have this anymore. But, you know, it's going back to fear, which is obviously the opposite of trusting in God. So we've got to conquer the spirit of fear if we want to conquer all these other things. Isaiah 41.10 
says, Fear not, for I am with thee. Be not dismayed, for I am thy God. I will strengthen you. Yes, I will help you. Yes, I will uphold you with the right hand of my righteousness. Amen. Hallelujah. Yes. See, we can depend on that's God's word to you, to me. I can rely upon that. It's truth, and so therefore I can trust it. Okay? Psalm 91, verse 1 through 7 says, He that dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress, my God, and whom um, in Him I will trust. Surely He shall deliver thee from the snare of the Father and from the noise of pestilence. He shall cover thee with His feathers, and under His wings shalt thou trust. His truth shall be thy shield and buckler. Thou shalt not be afraid for the terror by night, nor for the arrow that flieth by day, nor for the pestilence that walks in darkness, nor for the destruction that wastes at noonday. A thousand shall fall at thy side, and ten thousand at thy right hand, but it shall not come by thee. Hallelujah. Amen. So what do we have to worry about? Think about it. What do we have to worry about? We really don't, but we still do. That's what I recognize in myself. Like, Lord, I'm a man of faith and power. You know, I, I, I take victory over the enemy. How come I got to deal with this little thing? <laughs> <coughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> like, it's frustrating. I don't fear. I don't, what do I have to fear? I don't have anything to fear. I don't fear man. I don't fear this. I know God's going to turn all things around for my good. Like, but why does it still pop up? I believe it's the spirit of fear trying to attack me. And so I just got to be ready and I got to turn back, you know. But things come and they happen for a purpose. You know, sometimes, like God will allow it to happen so we get stronger too, you know. But sometimes it's just confusing. It is. Like, I'm, I'm usually so victorious. Why do I feel like this today? You know? Anybody feel that way before? Like, yeah, like I've been victorious all week long. Yeah. Yes. You know, yeah. I've been resisting the devil, filled with the Holy Ghost, filled with joy, mm -hmm. praying for the sick, sharing Jesus, you know. Just so many wonderful things. And all of a sudden, this one day, you know, it's like, ah. Oh. Huh. But do we stay there? No. No. He says, cast your cares upon me. Spend some time in prayer. Don't fear. Trust in Him. Amen. Amen. Revelation 21 4 says, And God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes, and there shall be no more death, neither sorrow nor crying, neither shall there be any more pain, for the former things are passed away. Man, that's going to be a beautiful day. That's a picture of heaven, if y'all didn't know. <laughs> yes. Amen. Um, Hallelujah. But we can experience some of that heaven on earth while we're here by casting our cares upon Him and, and just trusting in Him and praying. Amen. Being filled with the joy of the Lord. John 16, verse 33 says, These things I have spoken unto you, that in me you might have peace. In the world you shall have tribulation, but be of good cheer, because I have overcome the world. Hallelujah. So, Kuna Matana, you know, he's overcome already. Amen. And we're on the winning side. Amen. You know, what do you have to fear? That dumb devil. I really get sick and tired of the devil, like sneaking yeah. up, trying to yeah. attack my thoughts or my feelings or whatever, you know. And so, it's teaching me that I have to be on guard more. Amen. I have to be in the Word more. Yes. I need to pray more. I need to worship more. I really do. Yes. And I need to hear it more. Reality. Right? And the more I do that, the more I walk in the Spirit. And the more I walk in the Spirit, the more I'm victorious over the enemy. Yeah. Like he can't, you know, can't touch this. Dun, 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 right? <laughs> I'll take the hammer. Again. <laughs> so that's what it's like, though. If you're not putting on the full armor of God, he's going to get you. He's going to get you. <laughs> Put on that full arm, amen. <laughs> Matthew 5, verse 4 says, Blessed are they that mourn, for they shall be comforted. 
Psalm 30, verse 5 says, For his anger endured but a moment, but in his favor is life. Weeping may endure for a night, but joy comes in the morning. Amen. I like that part. Amen. The joy, yeah. That's a good part. <laughs> And, and I thought about that when I was sad, like joy coming, and, and it didn't come. I was still sad. But it doesn't necessarily mean that next morning. It is just simply means it's coming. Right? And so that's why I, I chose this message today to share, you know, because. I know the more that I speak the word of God about the subject, I can take victory over it. And I and I will usually do that just in my private time. But I recognize that a ton of people are dealing with this right yes. now. Yeah. A lot of people commit suicide during Christmas too. Yeah. They're so sad that they feel like they don't have them, that they don't have anything to give, or they don't have family. I know that feeling. It's like Man, like somebody that used to spend time with their family for years and years and years, like on Christmas morning, for example, and now they don't have a family, and now they're all alone. It's got to be tough, you know. Um, just crazy things happen in the world. Y'all heard about the bombing yesterday in uh, Nashville? Hey, man, I was, I was thinking about how it may have, have affected the first responders, you know, the police officers and everybody that was planning to spend time with their family that morning and, and just messed up their whole morning. You know, it's Christmas morning. You know, they wanted to spend time with their family and now they don't get to. So, I'm sure they're not happy about that. So, but there's, there, there's just things that happen. But the good news is that there's an answer. Amen. And the answer is that joy comes in the morning. And the joy of the Lord is our strength, the Bible says. That'll strengthen us to get over all that stuff. 2 Corinthians 1, verse 3 through 5 says, Blessed be God, even the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of mercies and the God of all comfort, who comforts us in all, all of our tribulation, that we may be able to comfort them which are in any trouble by the comfort wherewith we ourselves are comforted of God. I want to sit on this for a minute because this brings it as a body of Christ to us as a part of our responsibility to be there for each other, comfort each other. You know? How awesome is it when you're going through a time like that and you're sad and all of a sudden somebody sends you a text and just says, hey, just want to let you know I'm thinking about you, I'm praying for you, I love you, whatever, you know, and just a little something, yeah, right? Is encouraging. You know? And I'm sure you've had times where, like, even though that's nice, and maybe, maybe they even invite you or, you know, to go do something or whatever, he just not in the mood. You just don't feel it. So you just say no. It's almost like you want to go wail in your sorrow. <laughs> And somebody just invited you, you know. <laughs> but we do that because of the thing that we're going through at that moment, you know. And sometimes it's tough to deal with. But the point I'm trying to make in verse four here, church, is that it's our responsibility as loving brothers and sisters in the Lord to reach out to each other when they're dealing with something, they're going through, and and, and it's okay to let people know. I know some of your personalities is, I don't want to bother anybody, so I'm just going to go, oh, I don't want anybody to know my stuff, or I don't want people to feel sorry for me. What a, no, listen, this is family. Amen. This is family. Okay, do you think, for example, my daughter Mariah, when she's going through something, she's sad, do you think I want to know it? Yes. So that I can just go minister to her and comfort her? Amen. Yes. Well, don't you think we should all feel that about each other? Amen. You know, and, and I, I mean, you need to cast your burdens on the Lord, you know, not try to overburden all the people, but it's still, you can share what you're going through and say, hey, can you mind throwing a prayer in there for me? And who knows, the Lord might put something on their heart 
to share with you or do with you that would encourage you in that difficult time you're going through. So be okay with sharing with your church family some things that you're going through. That's what family's for, to be there for each other. And that's going to make you feel closer and loved and, and, and give you those things that you desire to have from a family. Well, how are you going to get any if nobody knows what you're going through? Right? But I know that feeling. I sure do. Like, I don't want to put it out and blast it all over face. But hey, guys, I'm just so lonely. You know, <laughs> loser. You know, that's what's going Some people might think, you know, Go get a life, you know. You don't want people to think that and comment that way. Sure, you know, it's not a happy thing. But to your church family that loves you, you know, uh, it's okay. Let somebody know. Verse number five says, For as the sufferings of Christ abound in us, so our consolation also abounds by Christ. So we have these sufferings you know, like we must take up our cross daily, and if he suffered, we're going to suffer too. The Bible never said you're not going to suffer. As a Christian, you're going to go through some suffering. Okay? But he says, but also consolation also abounds in you by Christ. So it's like he's there, he's consoling you, he's comforting you, he's giving you words that you need to hear. And sometimes he uses his children to give those words. So, like, like speaking his word from me to you today to maybe give some comfort. Psalm 32, 10. Many sorrows come to the wicked, but loving kindness will surround the man who trusts in the Lord. So this could be one area that somebody could be going through sorrows from is because they're dabbling in wickedness. If you're living a life of sin, that could cause sorrows. You know, there's different things that could cause sorrows, but that could be one of them. You know, because you feel, you know, especially if you have the Holy Spirit living in you and then you're dealing with some sin and then you feel bad about yourself and, you, you know, that kind of thing. So, make sure that you repented of your sin and that you're right with the Lord. Again, many sorrows come to the wicked. The loving kindness will surround the man who trusts in the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. Proverbs 12, 25 says, Heaviness is in the heart of a man. Uh, heaviness in the, I'm sorry. Heaviness in the heart of man makes it stoop, but a good word makes it glad. And this is why we need to know what's going on. And even if you don't, you know, every once in a while, just listen to the Spirit. Send somebody a message and let them know that you're thinking about them, praying for them, or say. And I remember a while back, I said, "Man, send a message, right?" And he said, "Oh, they made my day, or whatever." You know, just like just something out of the blue, just out of the love of your heart, just send it to somebody. Okay, not just on Facebook for the whole world to see. That's not what I'm talking about. More personal. 1 Thessalonians 5, 12, 19 says, And we urge you, brethren, to recognize those who labor among you and are over you in the Lord and admonish you, and to esteem them very highly in love for their work's sake. Be at peace among yourselves. Now we exhort you, brethren, warn those who are unruly, comfort the faint-hearted, uphold the weak, be patient with all, and see that no one renders evil for evil to anyone. But always pursue what is good, both for yourselves and for all. Here we go. 16. Rejoice always, pray without ceasing, and in everything give thanks. For this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. Do not quench the spirit, do not despise prophecies, test all things, hold fast what is good, and abstain from every form of evil. So it says, rejoice always. Well, how do you not rejoice always when you feel sorrowful? Cast your burden upon him. Pray. Rejoice even if you don't feel like it. And he'll start giving you victory. Pray without ceasing. 
So we need a continual attitude of prayer. Uh, while I'm speaking to you, I'm, I'm listening to the Father, communicating with Him, because I want to make sure I'm speaking what He wants me to speak. And then it says, in everything, give thanks. Notice it didn't say for everything, give thanks. You know, I'm not thankful for not being able to see my daughter as much as I want. But I can still be thankful in it. Be thankful for that for whatever God has provided for me. And that will help you to, uh, to take victory over the sorrow when you start focusing on things that you are thankful for. Does that make sense? Yes. So John 14, 27 says, Peace I leave with you. Oh, thank you, Lord. My peace I give to you, not as the world gives do I give to you. Let not your heart be troubled. Be believe in God. Never let it be afraid. That's encouraging. Yes. Can I read that again? Yes. I need help dying to hear it, so maybe you will have it too. I love it. Put a smile on my face. Now I'm going to cry. Alright, so he says, <laughs> Oh, great pastor. Alright. Peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you. Not as the world gives do I give to you. Let not your heart be troubled. Neither let it be afraid. In John 15, 7. If you abide in me, and my words abide in you, you shall ask what you will, and it shall be done unto you. Those are some encouraging scriptures. Yes. Amen. Amen. Yes. Are you encouraged today? Yes. I'm encouraged. That helped me. Oh, I need a, a smile. Yes. So hearing yes. God's word and his encouragement and how to deal with that is awesome. Hallelujah. Father God, thank you so much for your spirit of peace. Thank you for your words of wisdom. We love you, Father. And we thank you for your love and thank you for being there when we're going through difficult times, times of sorrow, depression, anxiety, or whatever people go through. You're there as our comforter, as our counselor, our teacher. We need you, Lord. Thank you for victory. As we cast our cares upon you today, we spend time in prayer, we spend time in your word, and we, we resist the enemy, yes. and we trust in you and not walk in fear, yes. but in faith. We thank you that we can be comforted and have peace in our hearts. Thank you for leading us with peace. We love you. We love you, sure, and we pray. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Yes. Thank you, Lord. You know, that's why I got a smile. <laughs> Turn your frown upside down. <laughs> Does anybody else have anything in their heart they want to share? It could be about the message, anything you've been through, um, any revelation that God gave you through this, or anything that could encourage others. Or anybody wants to come up for prayer, you can come up and we'll pray for you, encourage you, love on you. That's what we're here for, church family. We just want to love on you. Which one? Oh, um, pray for somebody. Come on, hey, could you come play something while I pray for them? Can I join you with that, please?
their health, their protection. Thank you for your blessings on their lives and their families' lives, Lord. Comfort those that are missing their family members as they are away. Give them peace, Father. In the name of Yeshua. Amen. I want to encourage you guys to continue on your own time to pray for our country and all the demonic attacks that are trying to come against the leadership of the country and the enemy will always try to stick his foot in the door and take control. So we want God's will to be done. Amen? Only his will be done. God bless you. Love you guys. Shabbat shalom. Thank you.